Hello, artists and art lovers. It's Ryan Hennessy. I'm the president here at Tag Gallery, and this is our latest installment of Tag Bites. I'm here in our South Gallery with artist David Stewart Klein and his show, Welcome to the New World, as it has always been. Welcome, David. Thanks for coming in and having this social distance conversation with us. Hey, Ryan. It's great to actually be here in the gallery with you. Yeah. <laughs> sequester in the home, in the home studio. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it, it's really great uh, to be together because your show, um, which is still up, it's it's on, um, and the show is from August, or sorry, it was from July 13th to August 8th. Um, I got another week up. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and your show, so much of it has to do with the emotionality and the anxiety of what we're today. Um, would, would you mind telling a little bit about uh, your thought process behind this collection of portraits? Sure. So um, actually the, the portraits were specifically, um, I, was, I was kind of targeting people of different cultures, specifically um, with the, some of the works in this, uh, in this show, Ch Chinese people, um, I wanted to, to really capture their humanity during a time where there's so much hostility towards different groups. I was actually really upset when I started hearing you know, people like Trump and everyone just saying like, oh, it's all the, you know, the Chinese conspiracy and, you know, it's just, it just, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, really, like, the, the Chinese people are going to come up with the virus to spread to the rest of the world. I mean, like, Come on. So to me, I just I felt like I had to use the skills and the the capacity to to um to portray a person's uh, character through these more intimate portraits with a with a modern uh, twist. Absolutely, absolutely, and you do that in such a, a variety of ways. Um, most of your works are in oil, or are in oil, yeah. but they also are. Um, you use acrylic as well a lot. So, um, what about the painting process um, appeals to you, especially between the two different media? I I feel like from my experience, almost everything that I've ever used has come into how I use paint. So mm -hmm. my time in sculpting, my time in drawing, all those things have been merged into my painting process. And of course, all the, the skills that I've developed with painting, but I love um, layering things very thinly so that you get more of a, a beautiful, rich layer of, uh, of color that, that, that's showing through, another layer of color. I also love um, getting really thick, goopy paint on the canvas, and I think that can that can communicate all sorts of things depending on what you're you're really trying to talk about. Uh, but then you can even do both. You can mm -hmm. you can do dry brush. You can do there's all sorts of techniques. But but to me, um, I I personally just find these as different kinds of vocabulary. Um, absolutely, the right? actual message that I'm, I'm I'm leaving the audience to look at. So. I feel the same way when I'm working with watercolor. That yeah. There is a science to the material, and understanding and interpreting that science is its own kind of special language between the the medium and the artist. Right? Yeah. We're having a conversation together. Um, no, that's a beautiful way of um, looking at practice. I also one thing that I've always loved about the art process itself is that, um, and I think this is where it differentiates um, between something that's more commercial and planned out versus something that's more um, interpretive and process oriented like fine art. Um, you, you have uh, something that, that's almost like a, a call and response between you and the canvas. When you put one stroke down, it's like you're trying to uh, resolve it on the canvas, but it's not planned, you know? Absolutely. Um, because the, the, the texturality of the canvas and, and you have the actual the colors, each stroke to me is like, it's a, something I have to respond to on the canvas in the composition. So uh, you have the actual content, but then you have the paint, the paint which is saying so much, mm -hmm. and the different ways you can apply it. So uh, you, you can have one area that's 
that's rather calm, and then some areas that are that are really hitting you in the face. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love that conversation, actually. One of my favorite parts. Yes, <laughs> right? That's, that's the joy of making, the joy of the creative process. I totally agree. Um, so you have a few interesting characters uh, in the show. Actually, you have a number of interesting characters in the show, some of which um, really range the gamut in emotionality. You have some stern characters and some surprised characters. You have characters that are obviously in anguish. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple of favorite characters, um, outside of yourself, of course, the self-portraits are wonderful, the self-portrait that's in the window here at the gallery is, is one of my favorite pieces in the entire collection. Okay. Um, but COVID John and Maggie are, I just, I fell in love with them, um, I had the joy of helping David uh, hang the artwork for his, his show, so I had some joy of actually getting to know photographs with them, so um, we've, we've had some moments, the art and I, but from, tell me about the two of them from your point of view, because I'm making up stories in my head about Maggie with her wonderful alien eyes, um, but also I'm making up stories about Toby John, who is just literally the John that's at everybody's raps. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I actually, I'm really curious what, when you say you're making up a story, what, what is that story? Oh, I mean, Maggie, I just... <laughs> Maggie's everything to me. <laughs> I love it. And I say that because uh, I love how each of her eyes is having their own expression. And that is literally like the instantaneous emotionality that I experience, right? This multiplicity of reactions. Um, you know, it's not... Uh, it, it, just because I'm, uh, you know, typically showing you annoyance, let's be real. <laughs> the, uh, that doesn't mean that I'm not experiencing a number of other things, and I love that that's mixed in there, right? The rolled eyes in the middle of her head are, yes. <sighs> like, yeah. that's every exasperated side of my teenage years. <laughs> I think that's that's something that's interesting about um, some of my my more uh, narrative paintings is that uh, or even drawings, ink drawings, and I'd like to, to show you some more of those actually. Is, is that I I have a weird way of putting myself in characters that I, even I don't like at times. So like <laughs> you'll I want them to feel really relatable, um, <laughs> you know, and I think um, there are things that that. Everybody can relate to with everybody, and even if it's somebody you don't like, there's still probably something you can relate about them. And and that's what's beautiful about painting is, is um, you don't actually you, you can you can process a relationship you have with somebody through painting, but you can also completely create somebody. Yes, you can have one feeling about a person and then create an entire world about that in a painting or a series of that. And I, that's what I love about it. So with somebody like Cliff and John. Um, you have a man that is actually based on the experience I had. Um, I, I, I do, I had a very strong impression of him, but I also love that he wanted to take off his mask for the photo um, in the middle of a public place. And I just felt like, I mean, I don't love him personally as a moral person, <laughs> but I felt like the fact that he, his smile was just radiant because he was like, oh my God, I'm stuck inside and somebody's gonna take a picture of me, you know? And, um, you know, whether it's, it's about his personality or not, I think I, what I'm trying to convey is that there is there is a spirit to the period we're all living in, and it's it's really potent. We're all scared of being outside right now, and yet we all want to be outside. You know, so that's why I left the, the gloves on and actually chose. I was thinking about should I put a mask on him? I, I didn't know if it was the most important thing, honestly. I actually like that it's not there because there is this really human reaction to want to show your face. Yeah. Um, and, you know, not to advocate that we shouldn't be wearing masks because we should all be wearing masks. And we're six feet distance right now. And aside from this video, we've been wearing masks everywhere inside the gallery as well as outside. So wear your masks and wash your hands. Please we're serious. Um, but no, I, I agree with you, I, I, especially when I bump into, you know, we're, I, I live in the middle of Los Angeles, it's very urban, 
Um, and so when I bump into my neighbors or bump into friends that I haven't seen in a number of months now, there's a natural inclination to want to tug down and show my smile. Yes. Uh, and it's a very hard thing to resist, and I understand the desire of that character, right? Wanting to pull down the mask. If you're going to take a photo of me, I want you to take a photo of my face. My smile. Yeah. I want you to see what I look like right now. And I think um, I had the same reaction, you know, with my artists, like, Man, my art's on the wall. I want I want to have a nice picture of me smiling. I put like the last seven months into this and, and it's like, oh, I'm supposed to cover my face up, but right. it's a very strange time. Um also I want to talk about with, with that painting specifically the the kind of brush brush strokes I made. Um it's 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 actually quite important to me that that there was a, a, a mixture of abstract and representation in that painting. Um I did not want it to be very specific, like where you're looking at the bottles and like, oh, there's this shampoo. I mean, to me, it was it was more of a sensation that you're in the aisle and that you have the, the mass of products and, and you're, you're trying to kind of live in that moment. Uh, I, I often find myself describing things in that way um, as bigger than the character, um, whether it's portrait or not, sometimes I, I find myself uh, just engulfing the character in what little surroundings I have. Because to me, that's sort of how I experience things. And maybe that's how we all experience things in a way. It's all kind of hitting us all at once. All at once. So. <laughs> Completely. No, I totally get it. Um, well, thank you, David. This has been a joy and a delight. Um, any final words for our visitors and our patrons that are watching or listening online? You can follow my career at David Stewart Klein. You go on Google, you can type that in. Uh, the Art of DK, it's D-E-K-A-Y. Um, and thank you so much for your interest. And thank you, Ryan, for your oh, wonderful yes. and uh, inspiring questions. Yeah. yeah, thank you. It's been a total joy. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Tag Bites. You can find more about artist David Stewart Klein at taggallery.net.